Pastor Terry Hunt joins me now from Bluffton. And, and Pastor, you have a story that um, is hard to believe. Yes, it, it will is. break many hearts, but it mm. will also give us reason to celebrate. Yes. Um, and I'm so glad that you've mm -hmm. joined us. Thank you. It's good to be here. You, um, your life really changed uh, at the end of mm -hmm. 2013. Yes. And you're still, as we discussed mm -hmm. going into this, reeling a little bit from all the events mm -hmm. leading up to today. Mm -hmm. So um, can you take us back to... 2013, mm -hmm. um, December really is the yes, month where yes. this all happened. Well, uh, December, uh, Christmas Eve is when it all began. Uh, we got a phone call. They were all coming. All my family is coming to my house. We have four. Let me, let me go back. We have. I have four brothers. There's yes. five of us, and our names are Larry, Gary, Terry, Harry, and Jerry. Four of us are in the ministry, and four of us are pastors. Well, they were all coming to my house in Bluffton for Christmas. It's usually the annual annual deal. So Christmas Eve, uh, we got a phone call about 1.30 in the morning, Christmas Eve, and they had taken my father to the hospital in Toledo with a heart attack. They weren't sure exactly what was happening, but that's what it turned out to be, really a massive heart attack. He had not been sick his heart entire life. This, he had never been in the hospital like this at all. And um, so one thing led to another, and uh, they, they said he wouldn't live much long at all because of the condition of the heart and the blockages, and they couldn't do stints, so they had to do an open heart surgery thing, and, um, and which they did the, the day after Christmas, uh, the 26th, and they gave him an 80% chance of success because we, we had prayed, we had, my dad had been, uh, and maybe you'll get into this later, I don't know, but um, he, he, he'd been a great singer, he had made a record way back in 1953, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so we, were, we had gathered around his bed and we were praying and, and the next day things improved so greatly that they said, we're going to do surgery and we believe there's an 80% chance of success. So we said, yes, yeah. you know, we're for life, you know, we're for life. In which this surgery was successful. And then um, about 20 minutes later they came back and said something happened, crashed, you just passed away. Just died on the spot. And you were all there. We were, the whole entire family, all of us, all the, fa the entire family, grandkids and great grandkids, they were all we were all here. And he's it's such a thing. he's such a strong man. I mean, yes. physically, he mm -hmm. he really looked very strong, and as you said, was not suffering much up until no, that time. No, um, no, no, veteran of World War II, wasn't he? Yes, he was. But that was really not. Um, he really, he, yeah. He didn't he, like to talk no, about he, that. No, no. I mean, he really was not in it. He was in it about a year mm -hmm. and at the end of the war. So it really wasn't a part of his life. But he I served mean, it our, our yes, country, which is awesome. Yes, he did. Yes. All right. So then yes. um, you mm -hmm. tried to recover from the shock. And, and as yes. pastor, well, yeah. you were called into duty then as well yes. because um, mm -hmm. you held his memorial service. Yes, we have my other three brothers who are in the ministry were all going to officiate this funeral mm -hmm. and uh, according to what my mom wanted and we were all officiating it. It's just mm -hmm. really an incredible time. I'm sure. Church was filled. Uh, my brother Jerry pastors Word of Truth Christian Center in Bowling Green, Ohio. So we were held, holding it there. That seats about 300, 350. The sanctuary was packed and filled to capacity at, the, at this time. My mom was sitting up by the casket and the people were coming in and they were had about 10 more people or so and then all of a sudden uh, at that moment, she passed out at my dad's funeral. You thought fainted, probably, or? Yes, we thought at first she had fainted, uh -huh. just passed out. But then it was moments later that we realized that actually she had passed away. There were doctors and nurses there that came. And, and so she was amazing. there in the midst of all of these people who were yes. celebrating your father's life yes. and, and dealing with the mm -hmm. loss. Um, yes. And then your mother passed away. My mom passed away at the funeral. It, it was like, you know, it was the most amazing thing we could have <laughs> ever seen. What was, it, what was your emotion, though? Honestly, what did you feel at that time? Like, this could wow. not be happening yes. to me or to... You know, it wasn't, family? you know, it was uh, a sad thing, but we knew that they were together. We knew, and then, you know, they, we knew that uh, she was with my dad. And it was the greatest thing that could ever have happened to her. We're all, I mean, it's wonderful. You know what? I mean, it's I, a blessing. Yes. Hallelujah. We're, yes. we're left, but my goodness, um, they had only been apart in their whole entire life for about five, six days, and that was the longest period of time. 
Do you believe, you know, we have heard of stories similar to this where, where spouses die within just, you know, yes. a day, hours of each other from a broken heart. Do you believe that that could be? You know, I think, um, oh, different thoughts on that. I, I, I suppose, yes, I, I know, it, I would think so. It's out of her, the love that she had for her husband, you know. Married for 66 years, knew each other since they were four years old, and... Um, and so. it is, it's, it's one of those times, I'm sure, where um, the human part of you is, is mourning their loss. Yes. But the spiritual side of you mm. knows that yes. they are in some place much greater than we can possibly oh, yeah. imagine. Yes. And, you know, not everybody who dies goes to heaven. That is just a, a myth that's out there. But when you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, they are. You do. And uh, they have. And, and they're they together. Their life. It's just wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Their overarching, my dad's and mom's overarching purpose in life was to establish a godly heritage with their children and, and grandchildren, which they ha indeed have. Yeah. This has been an amazing story, and it just seems to go on and on. Amazing. So as, um, as a pastor, and yes. as now the son of parents that, mm -hmm. that have passed on in the way that you know, this mm -hmm. all transpired, if there's someone out there right now who is dealing with the, the mourning of a loved one, how do you provide, what can you say to them that, that will get them out of this darkness and this gloom? Well, the, the, the answer, you know, we always say Christ is the answer, and we see it on I-75 down there, you know, mm -hmm. and that really is, that really is. Mm -hmm. Jesus is our support. The Bible says he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And that word sound mind means balance. He sustains us in the times of crisis, in the times of tragedies like this. It is the Lord who keeps us. He is more than just a coping mechanism. There are a lot of coping mechanisms out there that people go to that are not good, but they go to them because they work temporarily. Temporarily. And it feels like they're working. And, and for some, that's all they need is just a feeling, but nothing's really happening. With Christ, with Jesus, putting our, our life in His hands, calling upon Him, He sustains us. And that's where we get our strength. That's, that's the only way. That, that's I the know. only way you can make it through. It's Absolutely. Anything. There's nothing else. Because there's a hope. Christ gives us a hope. The world mm -hmm. does not give us hope. It takes away that hope. Is it okay to grieve, though? It's okay to grieve. Grieving is a part of it. Absolutely. Of course, we know Jesus cried. <laughs> the, that's right. At the tomb of Lazarus. That's right. Weeping and crying is, is fine. I mean, my life, yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's so neat that so many of you went into the ministry. And as yes. you said, your parents mm -hmm. wanted to leave a legacy. Yes. Um, and and mm -hmm. what a tremendous legacy they have mm -hmm. left with all of it's you amazing. boys. And, and how mm -hmm. about the grandkids and, and so forth? Yes. How are they all doing? They're doing great. Uh, they're involved in, um, in their churches and ministries. The thing with my... All of our, all the kids are saved five boys, and all the grandkids, and we're moving at the great grandchildren. Every single one of them, the entire family, serving God. And when when my father was in the hospital, we gathered around his hospital bed, and one of the songs that he would sing, and I grew up with him singing songs in church. And and each pastor that he was with, he was the kind of his right hand guy. It's kind of like a George Beverly Shea and a Billy Graham uh -huh. kind of thing, you know, every Sunday my dad sang. Yeah. One of the songs, great song, old song was Until Then, you know. My heart will go on singing, until then, with joy I'll carry on. And we would sing that around my dad's bed there in the hospital. It was fantastic, it's just amazing. The nurses there standing watch this amazing family that I have a, a, an honor to, yeah. to be a part of. And they were in tears. It was just, uh, and that's the way Christians die. Oh yeah, what a way you know. to usher him yes. out yeah. of this life, you know? I yeah. mean, and um, I want to share with, my, with you my father-in-law. Yes. When he passed away, we were standing around his bed, and our pastor arrived just in time yes. to say the Lord's Prayer, and he took yeah. his last breath during the Lord's yes. Prayer. And, yeah. you know, I consider those the miracles that are mm -hmm. happening mm -hmm. right now. Yes. You know, and, and we may not always recognize them as such, but I do believe yes. that's, that's what yes. that was, yes. you know? And, Absolutely, um, yes. So it's amazing. If, time. if there's something you could leave our, our viewers with right now, what message would you give them? This is what I would say, what my father would say. When I was, I was one of the last ones to leave his room before the surgery.
And I and if I can keep this as brief, I'm as a pastor, I can talk a little <laughs> while. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, but he, you know, he taught us this faithfulness, and truth, and steadfastness, and don't quit. Faithfulness, steadfastness, truth, and Finish don't strong, quit. Right? Finish strong, and yes, and by God's mercy and grace, you know, when he looked at me in my in my eyes, I saw him. I said, "We're going to see you in the morning." You know, we'll, we'll see you, and we will keep on preaching the gospel. Yeah. And I, we're going to finish stronger than what we began. There you go. We, I will finish stronger than the, when I began. Wonderful. And I've been around a little bit, but so we're going to finish stronger. You're doing for it. For the kingdom of God. You're doing it. For the gospel it. of Jesus Christ. Pastor Terry, yes. thank you so very much thank for being with us. Thank you for having me here today. All right. Back to you.